Now let me show you an example of what can happen if white gets over-optimistic in the advanced French. This is a game Shabal of Shirov, uh, played in the year 2005. Uh, of course, a lot of things changed since 2005. The way we evaluate certain positions, the way we play some variations, but of course some principles also uh, remain the same. And this game is, I think, a good example of certain things. Uh, so Shirov played bishop d7 here. So our move is uh, queen b6, um, but um, doesn't mean we cannot learn anything from, from this game. So bishop d7 and um, white played a normal setup where he brings the knight to c2 to consolidate this uh, pawn on d4. And um, you will also notice that compared to some you know very direct uh, ways that, um, that we analyzed for, for this DVD. Uh, uh, Black is playing in a very kind of slow manner, a uh, slow non-committal manner. Uh, this knight a5 prepares uh, bishop b5, but is of course also very, very slow. Um, so in 2005, um, the advanced French didn't have the reputation it has today. Uh, so Black, in general, uh, had the feeling that um, well, he can play this opening in, a, in a various ways. Uh, now we know that Black has to be kind of very precise, very, very direct. Uh, so this particular position has been played quite a number of times. And um, uh, I actually found this uh, quite curious to see what uh, what computer has to think about it. And uh, my computer suggested this wonderful move, Rook E1 which is, of course, a difficult move to find and even a more difficult move uh, to understand with uh, quite uh, a pretty point. So now after bishop b5, white plays takes, takes, and then knight e3. And then knight uh, takes e3 and then rook e3. And in fact, white rook gets ready to attack the black king once it uh, um, castles kingside. So quite um, a nice little regrouping and the one that shows that, you know, Black's play um, is probably just not fast enough. And um, um, in this game, Shabalov, Grandmaster Shabalov here, um, played G4, uh, which is already the first um, moment where he makes um, a move which, whilst you know normal and logical, is also a bit loose. This creates weaknesses where no weaknesses were necessary. And um, after knight d3, h5, now black actually um, gets some nice squares. And um, so gh happened in the game, knight f5, and uh, also a bit um, Remarkably, all of this um, is big theory. So white players somehow, they thought that this was a normal way to play. But now it looks, um, to me, it looks um, a bit suboptimal yeah? that you know white uh, can play this variation so much better than this. Bishop e3, knight c6. And uh, it continued in this uh, vein. Also here, uh, white could... Uh, make some some normal moves that would end uh, well that would end up in a normal position uh, but instead he chose this sort of uh, direct assault on the queen side played a4 b4 uh, but this results uh, well it, it, it get, gains space and creates some threats but also results in black uh, getting even more important squares uh, he has this knight on f5 and the bishop on c4 and um, and these are weaknesses that one uh, cannot quite repair structurally so uh, should have played queen d8 quite a lovely move the queen actually gets um, closer to to the white king and uh, in fact it was not doing uh, much on b6 also shows that uh, white is not really attacking anything and um, um, it's also interesting to see just how 
quickly white strategy backfired. Played bishop g4, knight takes e3, fe queen g5, h3. This bishop um, needed some support, of course. Rook takes h5. It's also interesting that black had um, g6 here, actually threatening gh was an idea ag and then rook takes h3. Uh, but it's not even necessary after rook h5, black is doing well enough. Queen f3 and, um, you know, white might have been pinning his hopes on this, that he attacks a spawn uh, on f7, but in fact, lines just do not work out for him at all. Should have castled long. Queen f7 and rook h3. Um, it's not immediately um, obvious because it's just so concrete, but black basically just gets there first. Queen e6, king b8, rook f8, and rook g3 check. This moment is very important. Of course, black cannot take here because of queen d6 check, uh, but rook g3, and then rook takes g4. Black has everything defended. This uh, d8 rook is defended by the queen uh, on g5, so white's attack is just short of uh, of successful, but once you know the white's attack is uh, repelled, black's attack of course cannot be stopped. Yeah, this king on f2 is absolutely naked and uh, white's um, army is also all over the place and cannot really um, cannot really support the king. So um, Shabalov threatened mate on c8 and um, and Shirov just basically got to the white king first. Uh, white uh, resigned here and um, in fact maybe it's uh, a bit early but uh, in fact um, it is not difficult for a player of Shirov's caliber to uh, to calculate uh, the lines like this and uh, uh, and also Shabalov, um, yeah, he understood what happened to him in this game. And if we return to, to the opening, um, I think it's very important. Um, opening aside, uh, it's quite important, even when you fight for the initiative, to make sure that you do not create too many weaknesses in your, uh, in your position. Uh, so sometimes um, it's easy to mistake these two things, right? You think you're fighting for initiative, but it does not mean that you just kind of going forward with your pawns, disregarding positional principles. So in this position, once again, Shabalov had this great opportunity to pose problems whilst retaining uh, his very healthy pawn structure. Instead, he went g4. A bit later, he went a4 and b4, and uh, this created no attack, but uh, but only weaknesses. Uh, in his position. So I think uh, well, with white, we have to be wary of those things. And uh, with black, uh, we should know that, you know, this kind of squares can uh, can give us um, a lot of counterplay later on. So I found this game quite a nice display of, uh, of you know, what can happen to uh, to white when he, when he loses objectivity. And I hope you also um, enjoyed the game and learned something from uh, from this example.